Hope you're having a good day today. Appreciate you joining us. It is August 24th. Today we are in Jeremiah. Jeremiah, we're going to be looking in chapters 32 and 33 today. Let's read a little bit. Appreciate you joining me. Verse 1, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. For then the king of Babylon's army uh, besieged Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the king of Judah's house. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, Why do you prophesy? Excuse me, why do you prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give the city into the hand of the king of Babylon. He shall take it, and Zedekiah, king of Judah, shall not escape from the hand of the Chaldeans, but shall surely be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him face to face and see him eye to eye. Then he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there he shall visit. He shall be until I visit him, says the Lord, though you fight with the Chaldeans, you shall not succeed. And Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, and let's pause there just for a second. So that's a little bit of the context. So here Jeremiah is, and he's he's been imprisoned. And... Not a good time, needless to say. To look at it, you see the time frame given. So it's the 10th year of Zedekiah, king of Judah. Um, Jerusalem is besieged. Okay, so Nebuchadnezzar is, he's at the walls. And Zedekiah imprisons Jeremiah because Jeremiah keeps saying, you're going into Babylon. <laughs> And needless to say, Zedekiah didn't like that too much. So, the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah in this situation. Verse 7. The word of the Lord, verse 6, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Behold, Hanamel, son of Shalom, your uncle, Shalom, your uncle, will come to you saying, Buy my field which is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. And the... For the right of redemption is yours to buy. Then Hanamel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said to me, Please buy my field that is in Anathoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is yours, and the redemption yours. Buy it for yourself. And then I knew that this was the word of the Lord, so I bought the field from Hanamel, the son of my uncle, Right, weighed out the silver, signed the deed, took witnesses, weighed the money on the scales, took the purchase deed, that was sealed according to the law and the custom, they end up putting it into an earthen vessel that would last many days, verse 14, and thus says the Lord God of hosts, God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in the land. The next section you can see here is entitled, Jeremiah prays for understanding. And to that we say, you don't say. <laughs> Jeremiah's in prison. And the word of the Lord comes to him saying, buy this land. Buy this land that you have the right to buy. And yes, Nebuchadnezzar is at the gates. Yes, you're in prison. But the word of the Lord says, Behold, when your nephew comes to you saying, Buy my field that, that you have the right to buy, go ahead and buy it. Take witnesses. Um, have witnesses come, whatever this may be and by the field. And then Jeremiah says, listen, he prays to the Lord, verse 17, he prays to the Lord, you've made heavens and the earth, there's nothing too hard for you. You've done all these things. You have given us the land, and now you're saying we're going off into captivity. And look, the siege mounds, verse 24. The siege mounds, they have come to the city to take it, and the city has been given into the hand of the Chaldeans who fight against it because of the sword and the famine and the pestilence. What you have spoken has happened. There you see it. And you have said to me, O Lord, you have said to me, O Lord God, buy the field for money and take witnesses. Yet the city has been given into the hands of the Chaldeans. And Jeremiah is effectively saying, what is going on? What is going on? Here I am, and I'm in prison. And the word of the Lord comes saying, when your nephew shows up with an offer to buy this land that you have the right to buy, buy it. And 
Jeremiah says, I don't understand. He's, he, di- he does it. He does it. And then he prays. And you can tell he just doesn't understand it one bit. And I want you to, to think about that idea. And you'll, you'll know where I'm going eventually. Because it sure does seem like a waste, doesn't it? I, that, this is, I think this is what's in Jeremiah's mind. This sure does seem like a waste. We're going off into captivity. You've said we're going off into captivity. The, the city is sieged. They've surrounded us. I'm in prison. This sure does seem like a waste, doesn't it? That's the first point. This seems like a waste. It sure does not seem like the right time, does it? And it doesn't. It doesn't seem like the right time. Like these these are not the days of prosperity. These are the day these are the difficult days. It sure doesn't seem like the right time. But he does it. And that's the thing. He does it. Look back at it. Because he's I mean he he did it. He did what the Lord told him to do. Now when I had delivered the purchase deed, I prayed to the Lord saying these things. He did it. So at the Lord's word, he did it. It seemed like a waste. Not the right time. Nevertheless, at your word. And hopefully with that last phrase, you know where I'm going with it. Because it made me think about the fishermen there at the Sea of Galilee. When Jesus, when one of the the first um, written encounters, not the first, but one of the first, when he says, let down your net, remember what they say? We've been fishing all night and haven't caught anything. It wasn't the right time. They hadn't caught anything. This seems like a waste. (laughs) Actually, in one of the accounts, it talks about some of them that they were mending the nets. It's like, great, we, here we are mending the nets because we've been throwing them into this water and they're, you know, just in, in the course of that, gotten rips and tears and whatnot, so we're having to mend our nets. But nevertheless, at your word, what seemed like a waste, won the right time, but nevertheless, at your word. And I was just thinking about that parallel. Because what what the Lord wants Jeremiah to understand is you have to let the Lord work. Look back at the language that he uses. Verse 16 says, I pray to the Lord. And he goes through and he Jeremiah says, Everything that you're everything that you've said is coming to pass. Why but why are you wanting me to buy this field? The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Verse 27, Behold, I am the Lord God, I am the Lord, God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He shall take it. And the Chaldeans who fight against the city shall come and set fire to the city. It's happening. This city has been a provocation to me. They have turned to me the back, verse 33, and not the face. They built the high places of of Baal. But then look what he says. He says, Now therefore thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries. I will bring them back to this place. And I will cause them to dwell dwell safely. They shall be my people and I will be their God. Ooh, now we're starting to get into covenant language. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts. Verse 42, just as I brought all this great calamity, so I will bring on them all the good that I have promised them. And fields will be bought in this land of which you say it is desolate without man or beast. It has been given into the hand of Chaldeans. Men will buy fields for money, sign deeds, and seal them. 
chapter 33, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time, while he was still shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus says the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Right? And as he speaks about these things, I will heal them. Verse 6. Verse 7, I will cause the captives to return. All of these things that are happening. Verse 14, Behold, the days are coming that I will perform that good thing which I have promised in those days, and, and at that time I will cause to grow up to David a branch of righteousness. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth talking about the Messiah. There's one more little phrase or thought. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Thus says the Lord, If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night so that there will not be day and night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David my servant so that there shall not, so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne. Notice what the Lord is saying. Like Jeremiah, I think the point is this. Can you stop? It's like all these things that are happening. Can you stop day and night? What's the answer to that? No. So the Lord is saying, you're not going to be able to stop me either. <laughs> They're not going to be able to stop me. And that in as much as these people have been carried off into captivity, I'm going to bring them back and the Messiah is going to come. You are not that this is what's going to happen. So what he what Jeremiah had to do, as you think about, well, this seems like a waste. It's not the right time. Nevertheless, at your word, he had to look past his circumstances. He had to have faith. He had to look beyond the here and now. And he had to look to the Messiah. He had to look to Jesus effectively. So was when the word comes to Jeremiah in prison, and the word is, buy the land. Is this really about the land? Or is this about Jeremiah? When the Lord says, let your nets down, I will make you fishers of men. Who were the first ones to be caught? Who are the first ones to be caught in the Lord's net, if you will? Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. The Lord, the Lord caught them. The Lord convinced them. Jeremiah, why is this happening? And the Lord's got him. The Lord's got him. In prison, with the siege going on, and the Lord says, this is what I'm going to do. You understand why this is happening in the here and now. You understand that. But now you need to have faith, because I will finish this work. I will finish the plan. This is just one part of the plan. You need to back up and look at the big picture. The Messiah is coming. Appreciate you. Hope you're having a good day. Thanks for following along with us. I hope you join us for our next brief look into God's Word.